Hello, good evening, everyone. How are you? Good I evening, miss. I good evening. Hi. I want to say sorry because I'm late, but it's because there was no energy in my house. <laughs> it just mm -hmm. came like like two minutes ago, so I logged in fast. So yeah, finally we have energy. We can go with the class. <laughs> okay, guys. Friday, three more classes after tonight. <laughs> what are your plans for the weekend? Do you have plans for the weekend? I have a I'll have a busy week busy weekend planned, but I want to know about your plan, guys. And when you mention when you talk about your plans, you can invent and try to incorporate the the classes that we saw yesterday. Conditional classes and time classes, when, unless, say that, if. Right. For example, tomorrow I in my case, right? In my personal case, since tomorrow is Saturday, I have to go to my dermatologist. Unless I fall asleep in the morning, then I will not go. <laughs> but I think I will. I think I will. That's the plan. <laughs> and after I get out of my dermatologist, I plan on going shopping because I have to prepare some things for the weekend for Sunday. Because on Sunday I got up. I'm trying to learn how to make pizza from scratch. So my plan is to, to do that. <laughs> well, if it doesn't rain, I think I will use. I will go to the supermarket in the afternoon. If not, if it if it rains, I'm not going. It's not happening, right? So, what about you guys? What are your plans for the weekend? Let me hear your plans. Even if you don't really have plans, try to answer with something. All right. My plan a weekend. Mm -hmm. I go uh, training of the lavado de dinero, como se dice? Money laundering. Money laundering. Mm -hmm. Within Sephora. Oh, that's like mandatory training, right? Yeah. Yeah, money laundering. I have a friend that he's an, he's an accountant, and they are supposed to take those training for money laundering. Again, money laundering. Yeah. Every year, right? Yeah. How many How many hours are you gonna be in training? Yeah. Uh, uh, in the pen, uh, uh, this the uh, H H H or oh the whole day then yeah well <laughs> and it's going to be like a press like in person um type of training or it's like an online training online. Online, the, mm. uh, but uh, but uh, but is evaluate. Okay, all right then. So, I hope that you, <laughs> that your training is not so boring, <laughs> Mauricio. Yeah. What about the other? It's very, it very boring. <laughs> oh no! All right. What about the others? What are your plans for the weekend? What are you gonna be doing? You guys are so shy tonight. No worries. We do have some conversation topics. So I'm going to share the screen with you. And we're going to answer these questions that we have right here. Okay. So the topic for tonight, for the conversation questions, is going to be genetically modified food. GM food. Genetically modified Okay, so we're going to do the same drill as yesterday. Okay, we're going to do the same as yesterday. We're going to select one or two questions and we're going to write the answer, prepare the answer so that it can be as complete and long as possible, right? Um, we don't want short answers. 
The idea is that you can improvise and speak as much as you can so that you can practice, right? So genetically modified food. You can select any of the of the questions and try to answer to the best of your capability. Okay. Um, for example, what does genetically modified mean? Do you think genetically modified food is safe to eat? Okay. Um, genetically modified is the opposite of organic, right? You know, you have the organic food, like the one you have in in the normal um uh, soil and then genetic genetically modified like the big fruits or the big vegetables those are not normal right <laughs> so they have been genetically modified to be bigger better supposedly and to be so that we can have them faster than the normal speed of time to get better right um so and then you can select Try to read them carefully and select one or two of the questions and write your answer, right? Do the best of your capability, okay? Um, there are some countries that they are ever even banning. Ban, to ban means to prohibit, prohibir. Okay? To ban something, it's to prohibit, okay? So we're talking about genetically modified food. Select one question or two and write the answer, prepare your answer. Mm -hmm. To be as long as complete and com as complete as possible. Mauricio? What did it mean, GM? Genetically modified. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Genetically you. modified. I was telling you it's the opposite of organic, organic food and genetically modified. That's GM food. So read the questions that you have there, select one or two that you want to answer, and prepare your answers to the best of your capability. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. For the ones that are connecting right now, you have to select one of the questions that you have here or here and write the answer the best as possible, right? Remember, we want we are looking for complete and long answers, opposite to short answers, right? Para los que se acaban de conectar, GM means genetically modified, right? Comida modificada genéticamente. Es lo opuesto a orgánico, okay? The opposite to organic food.
Okay, if you have your answer ready, let me hear it, please. Okay, I'm going to start reading the one that I selected, okay? So I selected number three, okay, from student A. And it says, do you think genetically modified food is safe to eat? I think yes, because it has been, it has been cultivated. Yes, it has been modified, obviously. <laughs> it's not 100% natural. But it, it has followed standards, right? There are standards um, that need to be followed by the companies that use genetically modified seeds, right, and plants. So even though they are not 100% natural or organic, they are still safe to eat. And I think for some areas, for some areas of population, it's more affordable, right? One thing with genetically modified food it's that it's more affordable because they produce it faster and they produce more, the price lowers compared to organic food. Nowadays, organic food is more expensive than genetically modified. But I think genetically modified food is still safe to eat. Maybe not every single day, but if you are in a hurry and you don't have any other option, you can still eat it. It's not like you're gonna die from it. <laughs> so that's my opinion. What about you guys? I want to hear your answers. Raise your hand if you want to participate. We want to hear your answer. So I can Hi. See. Hi, Carlita. Let us know. Uh, I choose the wireless science trying to develop uh, GM in crops. Okay. Mm, what is crops? <laughs> crops, cultivos. Ah, uh -huh. uh, I read a blog uh -huh. and say that uh, for the uh, one reason it's about the uh, world population of uh, 9 billion truster uh -huh. maybe for the growth the population population Population. Po population mm -hmm. is one reason. <laughs> and other, this uh, conventional farming and food production have not been able to sustain a consistent supply. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, the GM food. Mm -hmm. So bent uh, about the weather, the bad weather, maybe. Mm -hmm. the, um, yeah. And man uh, maintain the, the the product, for example. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's some of the main reasons are the extreme population, right? The amount of population has increased, increased, increased every year. And that's what I was telling you guys, like organic food and naturally grown food, it takes it takes some time to produce, right? To grow genetically modified on the other side, you can grow it a little bit faster. So it's available faster than organic sometimes, right? Sometimes. So yeah, you're right, Kada, you have very good points. And I like that you mentioned that you were reading a blog and that you found that information. It's very good. It makes It makes it sound... Very conversational. Good job, Carla. Okay, who else? Me, Tricia. Go ahead. Okay, number two. Why aren't scientists trying to develop GM crop? Mm -hmm. I think the application of the GM food is the better, better quality and charactery it is an um, artificial supplement for better human mm -hmm. animal and plant development they um, generate supplement for human development that mm -hmm. is what i've seen but they improve in size instead of buying five apples, I will buy only one 
upon for for all my family group mm -hmm. only this very good i like that you i like that you take your time when you're speaking Mauricio, but you make sure that your content is very well prepared so very good job great answer okay. Mm -hmm. okay um i have this word here for you guys the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect. Eso que ven ahí en el chat. The greenhouse effect es lo que nosotros llamamos el efecto invernadero. Okay. Yeah. Cuando quieran mencionar eso, efecto invernadero is the greenhouse effect. Greenhouse. Uh -huh. All right. Let me hear the other answers. What about Emerson? Which one did you choose? Okay, in my case, I remember reading that this type of the food causes some type of the cancer, and that is way of the not uh, advisable to consume it. And uh, in the case the the question number one was mm -hmm. uh, GM uh, about the the question number. Uh, three, no, but uh, number two, sir. Mm -hmm. They are trying to modify, modify it, modify it to solvent the food shortage in some countries, such mm -hmm. as the Congo, Somalia, and others. I want to read about this. That's right. The shortage, the food shortage, it's a, it's a, it's a huge problem and it's a very, very real problem, right? Food shortage, maybe we don't experiment it so much here in the country because we are a small country, but big countries like the ones you mentioned, Emerson, they do experience that, right? Especially because they don't have so many lands where they there is good soil to cultivate yes. fruits and vegetables. So yeah. That's one of the reasons why the scientists are trying to develop those crops that are genetically modified. Good answer, Emerson, thank you. All right, okay. um, let me see, Jose, do you have your answer ready? Uh, not yet, I, okay. I am a little confused because I am see the advantage and disadvantage of this. Mm, give me one minute more because sure. I am investing about it. Sure, sure, no problem. Uh, Juan Carlos, do you have your answer ready? Um, yes, Miss. Um, I choose the, 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 the three questions. Um, I, I think uh, there are not some or, or many uh, studies about it. Uh, I think uh, modified gene uh, genetical mm -hmm. uh, modified uh, uh, I think uh, must have a, a, some consequence in the future. Um, I can, I, I, um, I hear that uh, this practice uh, have a relation with uh, some disease uh, like uh, cancer, for example. Um, and I, I can uh, see, for example, in, in in my case, my, my son is is more taller than me, for example, <laughs> and, and and he only uh, only is uh, twelve years old. Okay. Uh -huh. he, he, the he he classmate uh, mm -hmm. two uh -huh. the many classmates are those. <laughs> I, I I think is 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 consequent uh, that this food is that's right. It has mm -hmm. a lot to do. You know they mm -hmm. say um kids children in general they are starting to develop earlier than they did in the back in the day. Like many years ago, you would start teenage. Like it would take you like at 13 or 14, right? You would start cheating. And then nowadays, like at nine, 10 years, you sell, you start the teenage process because the genetically modified food, it's 
it's doing that, right? They have a lot of hormones, hormones in the food. You know what they say about the meat and the chicken, that they have a lot of hormones? So, yeah, it, it probably has everything to do with that. <laughs> very good, very good comment, Juan Carlos. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Um, let me check with the others. Um, Nelly, Jonathan, do you have your answers? Just in case. Or you, Wendy, what about you? And me, so sorry, I almost come into my home. Oh, okay. Don't worry. Let us know when you're home so you can participate, Jennifer. All right? Okay. Wendy, ahorita, what about you? Ahorita lo estoy haciendo, teacher. Ya se lo digo. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Are you ready, Jose? As soon as I read it more, I am more confused because oh, I no. saw both things. I, I read that you can change the future because you can buy food in a cheaper pricing. However, so you tell the hormones and the end means change in the human body, right? Mm -hmm. Also, it can increase the population of the world. And, you know, we are a planet, so mm -hmm. we have a limit. We are not infinite, so mm -hmm. we cannot grow all in definitive. Yes, we have to get a plan. A plan. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, all the states should provide more education about these new things and that new type of food. To educate the people and also for it don't be afraid maybe it's good to open and it's good to take a change sometimes but i guess we have to get more more additional information for this topic that's, that's right. my opinion it's true we really don't know too much about it right now um we only know what they want to publish right but there are many things that they are not published um, for us, for civilians, so we don't really know all the details, right? Did you know, guys, for example, that the last month, the last month in the United States and in England, they approved that the, that the supermarkets can start, can begin selling laboratory created meat. Not meat from the cows, not meat from the chicken, poultry laboratory created meat right it's not the same as vegetarian meat like soy meat or proteomas things like that right it's not it's not vegetarian uh, meat this one is created genetically in a laboratory they call it lab grown meat do you think you guys would eat something like that Lab grown meat. And that's the name. Laboratory grown meat. Carne criada en laboratorio, right? And what they do is that they take some of the elements from the cow's meat and they isolate it, like island, they isolate it and they start to add other things, and obviously chemicals and things, so that it can become like a piece of meat like a regular piece of meat and now it's ready for sale it has been approved in the united states and in england that the supermarket can begin to sell that type of meat do you think you would eat that kind of meat i don't think i could i think i could not i could not trust that i don't even eat uh vegetarian like soy meat or the ones that you know when vegetarian tacos, things like that? I didn't do that, man. <laughs> right. It's one yeah. of the questions that springs to my mind also is if in a future it can be or it can create a issue, could be, right? Definitely. Definitely. If it, if it contains so many chemicals and most likely one of those chemicals is sugar or something related to that, right, for flavor. 
because vegetarian vegetarian replacements los reemplazos vegetarianos the re vegetarian replacements for me they usually taste like plastic so what they do is that they incorporate extra things to make it have the flavor of real meat right so eventually you will see that some people are vegetarian but they are really really in bad health because they are they try to avoid meat but they are consuming all those chemicals right so it's it's a debate it's a debate right do you do you feel ready wendy with your answer Ahorita, teacher. All right. Go ah, ahead. A ver si entendí. <laughs> Ahorita, teacher. Dale, Wendy, de eso se trata. Uh, we, we are SNTs trying to develop, develop a crop, crops. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the, bueno, yo lo investigué, teacher. Uh -huh. Dice, agricultural production uh -huh. has been proven to have improved um, some of the original uh, char characteristics mm -hmm. in the production of pesticides, no sé pesticides. Cómo dice, pesticide and the crop are not that much and that the much. food mm -hmm. and the food is not a magic white along a benefit to the farmer. Mm -hmm. I go from laboratories that may process to see if they are consum consumable. Mm -hmm. Que son consumibles. Mm -hmm. Consumable. Uh -huh. Eso, eso, imbécil. Very good, Wendy. I want to <laughs> say, I want to say that you did great because you investigated, right? You did your research. So very okay, good. Dice. Se adaptó y logró, logró responder muy bien con su investigación, Wendy. Thank you. All right. Thank you, yeah. teacher. Uh -huh. Okay. So that was for the conversation, the free topic for tonight for conversation. Um, before we continue, I'm going to take attendance. So bear with me for a moment. All right. So we have Carlos Vladimir Rodríguez. Dairo Jonathan Fuente, Eduardo Antonio Magaña, Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, Miss. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jonathan Jose González. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Jose Bernardo López. Jose Carlos Argueta. Present. Thank you. Jose Cesar Lemos. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Herrera. Present Miss. Thank you. Juan Jose Herrera. Present. Thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you. Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present teacher. Thank you, Mayra Cecilia Peña. Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Present. Thank you, Sandra Abigail Bonilla. Present. Thank you, and Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present, teacher. Thank you. All right, so guys, we're going to be talking a little bit about safety, hazardous challenges and safety, okay? So before we go to the students' manual, we're going to do a little bit of reading. Okay. We're going to read about the nine important warehouse safety tips. Okay. Um, as you know, working in a warehouse is not, first of all, it's not so easy. Second of all, it's not so safe. So we're going to be reading about that. There are nine points that we can consider as safety points when working in a warehouse. So every person is going to read two, two of the points, right? For example, the first person will read one and two, second person three and four, and so on. So we're gonna need at least five, four or five volunteers to read. Raise your hand, please, so you can read. So you can help me reading. 
Okay, Emerson, you will help us with number one and number two, please. Me, teacher. Wendy, help us with number three and number four. And Carla, help us with number five and number six. Oh, because these are very short, Carla, maybe help us with five, six, and seven, because they are like short, okay? And then number eight and number nine, we need one more volunteer to read. Do you think you can help us, Mauricio, with eight and nine? Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Let's begin, Emerson, please. Okay, keep areas clean and organized. Dispose of the any trash and recy recyclable materials immediately. Keep your surfaces, surfaces clear and orderly. Improve employee movement and efficiency by grooving similar items in a logistic flow. Clean, clean up spills. Have spill control measure ready. Tape work areas or lines on the floors to reduce a slip and falls. Falls keep cable cables. Tilt up and remove any things that could become in a trip hazard. Number two, only certificate. A certificate certified personnel should operate certified personnel should operate equipment equipment this may seem obvious but it's important and on the score never sure could this requirement child certification operator operator learn to correct way to their low and unload Forklift. How do you properly move and stack boxes? How do you maintain their equipment and how to guide the forklifts? All right, thank you. So we're gonna check some of the vocabulary we have here. Spills, derrame. Spills. Spills, spills. derrame. The liquidos, derrame de aceite, de lo que sea, spill, derrame, okay? Okay. Measures, medidas. Measures, medidas. Uh -huh. Y luego tenemos slips, deslizanas, deslizones. Cuando uno se resbala, se desliza, eso es a slip. Okay. And tied up, amarrado. Tied up, amarrado. Okay. And then dispose, botar. Como botar dispose. la basura. Dispose. Uh -huh. Ok. De nuevo entonces. Dispose. Como botar o desechar. Spill. Derrame. Measure. Medida. Slip. Deslizones. Right. Deslizones. O resbalarse. Resbalones. Eh, tied up. Amarrado. Right. Tied up. Amarrado. And then... I think we're good with that. So, number one and number two that Emerson was reading, they they are kind of logical, but not all the warehouses remember those processes. So the first, and I think this is not not only applicable to warehouse. It can it is applicable to all different areas of work, but more in in the warehouses, right? First, keep your areas clean and organized. Nobody likes to work in a dirty place or a disorganized place. So try to keep your areas clean and organized. Okay? And then this one is very important. This one is applicable to warehouses, right? Only certified personnel should operate equipment. If I worked in a warehouse and I have not received a training to operate the equipment, I should not be driving it, right? I should not be using it. So that's what they are telling us, okay? Those are the first two safety uh, tips. Thank you, Emerson. Number three and number four, please. Me teacher. Okay. Defining for life 
pants. Forklift. Forklift. Mm -hmm. Forklift. I pilot jack. Face should be clear. Say not. If you're adapting the modern lithium ion battery, you can get a full lithium. Lithium ion shares is lithium as one heart, so there no need to remove. Use heavy fully batteries. You no longer need to risk toxic spill due to battery weathering, nor will you need battery charging rooms. For, for key pants might need to be adjusted and simpi simplified. Mm -hmm. Number four, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Supply and wear PPE. E, PPE. E, PPE. Mm -hmm. Personal protec protective, 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 equipment. protective equipment should be tailored to your with hard and house condition and may include safety. Best still to both and hard. Hard hat, as it. Sí, hard hat, el casco. Mm, Pepe, require a water hose, has changed recently and might include surgical, a side, or. Ahí no puedo escuchar. En 95. En 95, max gloves and certify Google's to reduce risk of contagious. The size is spread. All right, very good, Wendy. Thank you. Okay, so forklift and pallet jack pass should be clear. Okay, when you hear the word pass, right, you're talking about a road. Pass, el camino. Un camino, un sendero. En este caso se refiere el camino de los montacargas, donde pasan los montacargas, right? Donde pasan los que cargan las paletas. Right, los pallets. Right, so path, caminos. Okay. And then, huge. It's an adjective for very big, extremely big, enormous, huge. Okay, huge is an adjective para decir inmenso, muy grande, enorme, right, huge. Okay, and then, Mm, no, acá está bien. Then we have personal protective equipment or PPE. Tailored to. Hecho a la medida o adaptado a. Hecho a la medida o adaptado a. En este caso, hecho a la medida del, de la bodega, right? Tailored to the warehouse conditions. Vocabulary. We have safety vest. El chaleco de seguridad. Safety vest. Vest es chaleco. Okay. Steel toe boots. Botines con punta de, de acero. Steel toe boots. Creo que les dicen cubo. Botines de cubo. O botas de cubo. Something like that, right? Steel toe boots. Hard hat. Hard hat son los... No es un helmet. Un helmet es un casco como de motociclista. Helmet. Pero los hard hats son los cascos como de gorrito. Que son duros. Que son para seguridad. Hard hat. Okay, los que son amarillos. And then, yeah, más, hablando de surgical style o R95, las mascarillas, right? Las N95 o las quirúrgicas, right? Gloves, guantes. Gloves, guantes. Safety goggles, los lentes de seguridad, los lentes que se ponen, los goggles de seguridad, right? Disease spread. Disease spread, regar enfermedades, okay. regar enfermedad o esparcir enfermedad. Disease spread, the just for vocabulary. Okay, so number three and number four safety tips in a warehouse is that if you are going to use forklift, they need to have a defined 
fast, right? They cannot be going all of the warehouse and maybe there are areas where only civilians can be, right? So if there is, you're going to use any type of vehicle, it needs to have a defined section area where it's going to pass, okay? And then supply and wear PPE. Here in El Salvador, this is part of the uh, of the work law, the la ley del trabajo work law. Your company must provide you with everything that you need to do your job, right? And if you work in a dangerous type of job, the company needs to provide you with your personal protective equipment, right? You should not be buying it. The company should be giving it to you, okay? Let's go with number five, six, and seven. Okay. And number five, inspect the equipment regularly. Uh, conduct regular inspections and maintenance of wrecks, conveyors, and lift equipment. Refer to our forklift operator checklist for even more details. Uh, number six, how regular safety training. Conduct initiation. Initial training for all new hires. Additionally, a schedule ongoing training session quarterly or as needed. Ex expect, expect. Uh, expect. Expect to roll out new safety standards in response to both internal and external change, uh, such as such as new equipment acquisition and environment factors respectively okay. and number, seven. number seven optimize warehouse layout develop a logical flow reduce difficult movements for people and equipment this article gives you Ah, 50. 50. <laughs> 50 things to consider when planning to lay out of your warehouse operation. Thank you, Carlita. So yes, point number five, inspect your equipment regularly, right? This is this is similar to when you have a vehicle, your personal vehicle, right? Your personal car. You have to inspect it. You have to take it to the shop, right? To be reviewed and checked. In a warehouse, if you use machinery, it is the same, right? Racks, racks, estantes, okay? Racks, estantes. Conveyors, son las bandas transportadoras. Conveyor belt, las bandas transportadoras. And lift equipment, the port lift, the, the pallet thing, all of that, right? And then this one is very important, hold regular safety training, right? Um, It's not enough. It's not enough to only give a safety training at the beginning when the person starts in the company, right? You should do it regularly. The company should that really cares about safety, they should be doing safety training regularly, right? And new hires, new hires, las nuevas contrataciones a los recién contratados, AKA el empleado nuevo, right? <laughs> new hires, los empleados nuevos, okay? And then number seven, optimize your warehouse layout. De esto ya habíamos hablado. Optimizar la, la disposición. Cómo están dispuestas todas las cosas en el warehouse, right? And then I think that's it for vocabulary. There is one word, esta palabra, to roll out. To roll out. En este contexto no quiere decir desenrollar. No es desenrollar algo, no. Roll out en este contexto quiere decir implementar. Okay, expect to implement new safety standards. Es lo mismo que implementar en este contexto. Right, to roll out new, okay, we're going to roll out new rules, etc. Okay, very good. Let's go with tip nine, number eight and number nine for safety. Mauricio, please. Okay. Number eight. Have a plan. The practice drill. Develop emerging preparedness procedures for fire, lockdown, and likely natural disaster in your area, such as tornado, 
quack or flash food. Deer will help employee employee respond to real life emerging emerging with efficiency and a greater sense of calm. And number nine, encourage communication. Solicit input from the floor. Having a surface suggestion box is an anonymous way for people to provide new, new idea or hold effective feedback meeting to uncover my own law and large chain that can help reduce risk of injury. We should help an uh, improved employee, mother, or boys, or hair. Very good, thank you. Uh, vocabulary, drill. Simulacro. <laughs> drill, simulacro. Yeah. Okay. Drills, simulacros, lockdowns, aislamiento. Okay. Flat floods, inundaciones repentinas. Flat floods, sorry. Flat flood. Flat flood, inundaciones repentinas. Earthquake, ya, yeah, terremoto. Okay. Then. I think that's all for vocabulary there, okay? So point number eight and point number nine, right? Have a plan, do practice drills, right? Meaning don't wait for the emergency to happen. Don't wait for the natural disaster to happen. You have to practice the drill. I'm sorry, this thing isn't working. <laughs> so you have to create drills to have your employees prepared in the different situations, right? Some companies they don't let they don't tell you when they are going to the drills. They do like surprise drills, right? So that everyone can be prepared. But if before they do the surprise drills, they give people training, right? Holding regular safety training. Okay. And then on number nine, encourage communication, right? Always ask for more. Ask for suggestions, ask for ideas or advice, right? from people that may be expert or they may know about the topic. So very good to the one who read. Now that we know about the safety tips, you know, in the basic safety tips, there are more, but those are like the basic ones. We're gonna go to the student's manual, right? And here we have this question. Hazardous materials and machinery are always found in a warehouse. How do you keep your employees out of danger? What kind of dangerous materials and chemicals may be found in a warehouse? So what you are going to do right now is that you're going to create a conversation. You're going to go into the breakout rooms and you're going to create a conversation. And in that conversation, you're going to answer these two questions, right? You're going to incorporate them. How do you keep your employees out of danger? And what kind of dangerous materials and chemicals may be found in your warehouse, in your company, right? That's those are two parts that you need to two questions that you need to incorporate in the conversation, right? Make try to make a long conversation, right? For example, you can be okay, we're planning the next, we're planning the drill. We're planning an earthquake drill for the company. All right. So what do you think we should do for the drill? Uh probably we should prepare the people for this and that, right? And then mention what types of dangers, what type of materials could be in the company when you're preparing for the drill, right? And how are you going to keep your employees out of danger, etc. So make a conversation regarding that topic with those two questions in mind, right? And you're going to have 15 minutes for this one, right? So the rooms are open. You can go in and begin with your conversation. Pueden ingresar a las salas, van a tener 15 minutos para preparar la conversación. Traten de mencionar, incorporar, contestar esas dos preguntas. Y puede ser el contexto de que están preparando un simulacro. ¿Okay? Puede ser de incendio, de terremoto, de inundación. Y ahí se pueden ir como guía. Agárrense como guía de la conversación. ¿Okay? You're going to have 15 minutes, so you can begin. Pueden ingresar a las salas.
Vamos a ingresarlo, por favor.
All right, now that we're all back, we're gonna start. Um, there was no room to room one because nobody was there. So we're gonna begin with room number two, and that is Jose Romero and Mauricio Velasquez. Go ahead, please. Start, Jose Romero. Okay, here we go. Uh, Miss, we were talking about the real situation that happened in our company. So the first one that we choose was the first solution, right? Warehouse mm -hmm. layout and unorganized tools. Okay. Okay. The second one, continuous training on the use of, of the tools and the machines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other one, maintenance of equipment in optimal condition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other one, keep staff insured, right? For whatever emergency, right? Mm -hmm. Number right. yes. Next, make a plan of simulation for evacuation. Mm -hmm. The other one, do not overload the staff with overtime or extended hours. Okay. The other one, creation of occup occupational safety committee. In the public, we call it COSO. We this one make sure that created evacuation route is the organization of the the all the last that I said the last step that I said mm -hmm. and for the also is the is the commit committee uh, in charge of it the committee in charge of it so okay. my partner going to explain anymore all right okay I. I think uh, uh, carry up planning the equation drill and um, practices of putting off fire and making evasion ropes and signaling fighting a stinger and ensemble and occupational safety committee. Safety, safety committee. Safe, mm -hmm. safe, safety committee. Mm -hmm. um, only this all right those are very good very good points right um if you are not organized there is no way that it's gonna happen right even if you have all the things in place but if nobody knows and it's not organized there is no guarantee that they are going to know what to do right in the emergency or in case of an accident so very good well done Jose Mauricio thank you okay now we're gonna listen to room number three. We have Juan Carlos and Tabla. Go ahead, please. Hello. Hi. Hello, Miss. Hi. Hi, Star, or you, Juan Carlos? <laughs> I don't know, if, if, if you want, Star, you and I finish some, some points. Okay. Uh, we choose the fire plan and we uh, write, we write a uh, different uh, things about do we can do in, in the plan. For example, the company that anal the company that analyzes Analyzes the facility. Analyzes. analyzes the facility in the fire risk that the company may have. Uh, installing fire fighting infrastructure. Then training staff on fire safety and fire prevention. Uh, do periodical program of fire drills. Uh, taking out a uh, fighting series and uh, in Swiss policy or security. So, uh, what, having, what are you trying to say? Uh, que tienen que tener un uh, seguro de un seguro, un seguro contra insurance. Ajá, oh. insurance. <laughs> insurance. Fire. Fire, Fire insurance. insurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
having an inventory of flammable products and having a safe place to store them. Uh, have modular infrastructure for don't lose all the products. <laughs> and have the proper signage at all facilities. Uh, señales, tener adecuadas señales. Signals. Have the... Signals. Signals. Mm -hmm. The proper signals. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, in the question, Juan Carlos. <laughs> okay. Um, the other... Uh, the other point that considered is uh, have a, a modular infrastructure uh, in case that the fire uh, there is a fire uh, mm -hmm. and and ha, uh, have the the, the signal uh, in evacuation routes or paths um, in the question, for example, uh, we answer the uh, who do uh, you keep your employees uh, out of danger? Uh, that employees use the appropriate equipment, such as a helmet or food wars and selfie clothing, for example, mm -hmm. and have a, a, a restricted areas and take up um, a, a, med a medical insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and the second one question, uh, what kind of dangerous materials and chemicals uh, may be found in the warehouse? Mm -hmm. uh, we classify the, the type of materials such as uh, gasoline, gas, oils, uh, some chemicals, and keep them in a solid place. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, uh, that's all. Okay, very well done, Carla and Carlos. That was very well explained step by step. What would be the measurements, right, that you will in, implement? And then also answering the questions within the same conversation, the, the same exposition, right? Very fluent, also very good. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Carla, nice job. Now we're going to listen Thanks. to, mm -hmm, we're going to listen to Emerson and Wendy. Please go ahead, guys. Okay, Miss, uh, could you allow me to share the screen, please? Yeah, give me just a okay. minute. I'm just going to change. Just a moment. Try now, please. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Sir? Yes. Okay. Hi, Wendy. Did you know about the new disposal of hazardous material in the warehouse? Yes, I had information about what in the warehouse. Sounds great. So, you know, we need to have extinguishers in chemical area. Yes. We had already placed design for the fire house in the anti spill sun. Well, uh, when we when would you like as a schedule a draw evaluation to the employees? The knowledge of fire and safety standards. If it's okay, why me to schedule it for this week from now? Okay, well, we will see you in two weeks. Yes. All right, great job with that conversation, Emerson Wendy. You mentioned a very important point. After you give training or after you give them, how do you know that the people really understood and you suggested the, the uh, quiz, the exam, right? How can you, the test, right? How do you know if they, understood what you were doing so very good so that you can be sure that they know what to do right so very good job Pat Emerson and Wendy thank you very very good all right so moving forward with the students Manuel we have on page 
33 here. We have a conversation and let me just, we have these questions. Does your company handle items with expiration date? Cosas con fecha de vencimiento. Does your company handle items with expiration date? What happens to products that go out of season or become irrelevant in the market? Okay, so that's what we're gonna be seeing. We have a conversation here. Sarah is asking Ramon some tips on the basics of inventory control. I need two volunteers. One person is going to read Sarah and the other person will be Ramon. We're going to do two rounds of this conversation practice. Okay, Mauricio, help us reading Ramon, please. And Wendy, can you help us reading Sara, please? Wendy? Can you help us reading? <laughs> Wendy, can you help us to read Sara, please? Yes, <laughs> Tatisha. How does how does inventory management work, Ramon? You need to have enough product in your inventory to sell to your customer when they want it. But you don't want to have too much in your inventory, or you will be paying a lot of money to have it stored. Oh, well, I was thinking of investing in some new case for the iPhone. Uh, don't do it. Now that's the air phone. X. X is on storage, you will not sell much. That's one of the problem with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you thought you could sell more than you did, and there is a change in the market, you may uh, now pay for product you can sell. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Wendy, Mauricio. Okay, we need two more volunteers. You're going to read the same conversation. This is round two. We need one volunteer. Carla, help us reading Ramon, please. And we need one more person to read Sara. Carlita, you're going to read the, um, Ramon. And I don't know, Juan Carlos, can you help us reading Sara? Please. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Only yeah. Ramon. <laughs> okay, no problem. Carla, no problem. Le, Carla le ganó el puente. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, uh, who does inventory management work, Ramon? Mm, you, you need to have enough products in your inventory to sell to your customers when they went, went in. Uh, but you don't want to have too much in your inventory or you will be paying a lot of money to have it stored. Oh, well, I was thinking of in, in, investing in some new case for the L phone X. Uh, don't do it now that the L phone, L phone X is on stores, you will not sell much. That's one of the problem with inventory management. When you have too much inventory because you know you could sell more than you did and there is a change in the market, you might end up paying for products you can sell. Very good. Thank you to the ones who participated reading. So now we're gonna read the questions we have for this conversation, okay? Why is it important to have enough product in your inventory? Why is it important for it for you to have enough product in your inventory? You will see it here. Okay. 
of or you will be playing a lot of money to have mm -hmm. it stored. Exactly, right? You need to have enough products, but if you have more, you're going to spend money paying for storage. Very good. Number two, is it a good idea to have an excess? Well, that's the one that Wendy just answered, right? Not a good idea because you will pay for a storage, right? And number three, what happens if you have too much inventory and market prints suddenly change? Okay. What would happen? You might end up paying for products you can sell. Exactly. You might end up paying for products that are going to stay there forever. Probably you're not going to sell them, right? That's in the case that the market trends suddenly change, right? For example, something is very popular right now. An example, um, a stress ball. A stress balls are very popular right now. So I'm going to buy thousands to sell them to stress people. But suddenly they are not popular anymore. But you already buy the, bought, you already bought them. So you lose your money, right? So that's what one of the things that could possibly go wrong there, right? So let me just check if we have this part ready. Just a moment. I'm going to share this video with you guys. Okay, so we're going to watch a video and we're going to, we're not looking for vocabulary. They actually use very simple vocabulary in this one. What I need you to do is to pay attention to the video and try to prepare one comment. Traten de preparar aunque sea un comentario sobre el video, okay? Algo que les interesó, algo que entendieron, algo que no entendieron, qué les parece o de qué habla el video. Okay? It can be any of those things. Pero al final de él, tienen que tener algo preparado para comentar. All right? Welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday, where we discuss inventory management issues and we keep the concepts small enough that we can fit it onto a whiteboard. I'm Kirk Tanner and I'm Chief Marketing Officer at Fishbowl and today we're going to talk about what is inventory management. Now this drawing here is a very simplified version of what inventory management is, but it's good enough to get our point across. Um, let's start out over here. We get goods delivered that come into receiving. All these items in receiving eventually have to be put away on the shelves. Um, and then later on we're going to pull these items. Some of these items might be pulled to be uh, used in a manufacturing process or we might be involved in wholesale distribution and we'll just pull these goods and we'll send them out to our customers so that they can do things with them. Regardless, uh, whether you're a manufacturer and you've got a finished good or you're sending out parts, all those pieces need to be shipped out at some point. Uh, a lot of companies will actually do a manual process to keep track of all of this and accomplish their business processes. Some are using an automated process. Let's talk about the manual process here for a second. This is very labor intensive. We've got a lot of data that we need to keep track of. This is only a small sampling of the data. Lot numbers, serial numbers, cost, quantity, dates for production, expiration, and shipment. When those goods come into receiving, that data needs to be captured for efficiency purposes and keeping track of your inventory. Um, you move that from receiving over to the shelves and you've got to update all this information that you're tracking. When you pull this, you've got to update it again. So again, if it's a manual process, you're involved a lot in a lot of labor intensive activity to move these items all the way through to pick pack and then ship them. That manual process is very labor intensive. In an automated process, when this truck delivers the goods, you have a couple options. One, if it's a large shipment, you can move it right into receiving and then scan it with a barcode scanner and move it into these locations, scan these locations, and now your automated system knows exactly where all that inventory is. If it's a smaller shipment that arrives, you can skip this whole receiving area and just barcode it right into the places that you put it on the shelves and you know exactly where it is, how much you have, and it's there when you need it. Now when you pull it off the shelves, again, you'll barcode it. It's updating your system. It's going through the manufacturing process or you're pulling it for distribution. But this whole pick, pack, and ship process that ends up here, 
you're tracking all of this through this automated system so that when it ships out the door, all of your inventory is dynamically updated and, and is real-time data, which ultimately gives you better information. So our final math here in our accounting terms is we want to increase our tracking efficiency. We want to do a much better job of tracking all the parts that go through your business. We want to de decrease the amount of time you spend doing that. And the result of this is you get much better business information. Now, to run your business, the better the information, the better the business decisions you can make. So having this automated system becomes very, very valuable because of the reports that you can get. Of course, with better uh, business information, better reporting, you get much greater efficiency and you reduce your costs and you have a much better run business. That's it for Whiteboard Wednesday. Join us again next week. Thanks. All right. We're going to watch it one more time. And this time we're going to try to get you some subtitles, guys. So you're going to watch it one more time with subtitles so you can have your comments ready, right? Lo vamos a ver una vez más con subtítulos para que ya puedan terminar de preparar su comentario que van a hacer después cuatro video, right? Welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday, where we discuss inventory management issues and we keep the concepts small enough that we can fit it onto a whiteboard. I'm Kirk Tanner and I'm Chief Marketing Officer at Fishbowl and today we're going to talk about what is inventory management. Now this drawing here is a very simplified version of what inventory management is, but it's good enough to get our point across. Um, let's start out over here. We get goods delivered that come into receiving. All these items in receiving eventually have to be put away on the shelves. Um, and then later on, we're going to pull these items. Some of these items might be pulled to be uh, used in a manufacturing process, or we might be involved in wholesale distribution and we'll just pull these goods and we'll send them out to our customers so that they can do things with them. Regardless, uh, wh whether you're a manufacturer and you've got a finished good or you're sending out parts, all those pieces need to be shipped out at some point. Uh, a lot of companies will actually do a manual process to keep track of all of this and accomplish all their business processes. Some are using an automated process. Let's talk about the manual process here for a second. This is very labor intensive. We've got a lot of data that we need to keep track of. This is only a small sampling of the data. Lot numbers, serial numbers, cost quantity, dates for production, expiration, and shipment. When those goods come into receiving, that data needs to be captured for efficiency purposes and keeping track of your inventory. Um, you move that from receiving over to the shelves and you've got to update all this information that you're tracking. When you pull this, you've got to update it again. So again, if it's a manual process, you're involved a lot in a lot of labor intensive activity to move these items all the way through to pick pack and then ship them. That manual process is very labor intensive. In an automated process, when this truck delivers the goods, you have a couple options. One, if it's a large shipment, you can move it right into receiving and then scan it with a barcode scanner and move it into these locations, scan these locations, and now your automated system knows exactly where all that inventory is. If it's a smaller shipment that arrives, you can skip this whole receiving area and just barcode it right into the places that you put it on the shelves and you know exactly where it is, how much you have, and it's there when you need it. Now when you pull it off the shelves, again, you'll barcode it, it's updating your system, it's going through the manufacturing process, or you're pulling it for distribution, but this whole pick, pack, and ship process that ends up here, you're tracking all of this through this automated system so that when it ships out the door, all of your inventory is dynamically updated and, and is real-time data, which ultimately gives you better information. So our final math here in our accounting terms is we want to increase our tracking efficiency. We want to do a much better job of tracking all the parts that go through your business. We want to de decrease the amount of time you spend doing that. And the result of this is you get much better business information. Now to run your business, the better the information, the better the business decisions you can make. So having this automated system becomes very, very valuable because of the reports that you can get. Of course, with better uh, business information, better reporting, you get much greater efficiency and you reduce your costs and you have a much better run business. That's it for Whiteboard Wednesday. Join us again next week. Thanks. All right. Let me hear the comments that you prepared. Then. 
Do we have volunteers? Mauricio? Mm, estoy pensando ahorita. Ok. <laughs> what about you, Jose? Ok, Miss. Uh, when I saw the video the first time, I got some ideas, but when I saw it again, I have a little bit clear. So I, I, I saw that he was comparing the manual labor and aromatic labor, right? Or mm -hmm. manual process and mm -hmm. aromatic process. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, he was telling that if you are in aromatic, you can do it too fast and more organized. And it provides additional information. And so if you have additional information, you can create better business and also get better reports. So for this reason, I guess it's the best way is trying in a aromatic process. Yeah, it's more organized. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it can be more expensive, but if you compare that in the end, we're gonna be organized. It it pays off, right? It, it's yeah, valid. That's what I got. Very good, nice comment. Okay, very complete. What about the others? Did you get any comments? Um, I the video refers to the process of inventory management. Uh -huh. uh, first, the product is received, then it's stored, and once the story is prepared for shipment. Exactly. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if right but i understood uh it can be done in two ways yeah manually or by computer uh -huh. that's right Carla. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no. so there are there are two different versions on how you can process that right how you can do that and it, each of them has advantages and disadvantages right you just have to know what what fits better depending on your business Okay. okay, so now that we watched it, we have an idea on the inventory manner. We're going to go back to the student manual. I'm going to show you the conversation we have here, right? This conversation was... Okay, this conversation was just an example, right? What you're going to do right now is that you're going to go to the breakout rooms and you have to create a conversation about ex in explaining the relevance of an effective inventory management, okay? One person can ask, okay, okay, Fulanito, Fulanita, um, here's what we need to do. We need to create an inventory because it's almost the end of the month. So we need to manage the inventory. And the other person can be like, no, why do we need that? Maybe it can wait, etc." Okay, so you're going to explain what is the relevance of the inventory management, right? And you can explain also here, for example, right? What happens if you have more than necessary? What happens if you have only enough? Or what happens if you have less than the necessary, right? Or the other areas or the other things that could affect the inventory, right? For example, you buy a lot of product, but then it's a change of season. It goes out of fashion, pasa de moda, et cetera. Right? Those are just some of the examples, okay? So I'm going to open the rooms and I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes to prepare this conversation, okay? Las salas están abiertas, pueden ingresar, tienen 10 minutos para crear una conversación en la que expliquen esto, la relevancia de un manejo efectivo de los inventarios, right? Pongan ejemplos. O tienen historias que mencionar, hagan incorporarlas para que sea una conversación completa. ¿Ok? Ustedes busquen ahí de qué forma lo van a hacer el acercamiento para empezar a abordar el tema. ¿Ok? You're going to have 10 minutes. The rooms are open right now. Van a tener 10 minutos. Las salas están abiertas a partir de ese momento. You can go in. Pueden ingresar.
Okay, we're all back. We're going to listen to the conversation from room number two. And here we have Mauricio Velázquez and Jose Romero. Go ahead, guys. Okay. Hello, Jose. Hi, Mauricio. I have a question. Can you explain me? To, can you explain to me what is the most relevant thing about effective inventory management? Well, thinking about an efficient inventory management, it could be difficult because it's not my strength. However, I listen to something that it reduces the cost and less the risk of damage on the product. Ah, yes, of course. But I think we should add more product management. Have you ever heard of automatic process? Yes, for sure. I remember once I heard something about it, automatic process. It can be expensive at the beginning for the matching pricing, but after that, it can provide nice profit. Oh. Would you be willing to make that inversion? Uh, at the moment, I don't have the money, but <clears throat> I will look for it because it sounds really interesting. Really interesting. Okay. Okay, good, okay, good luck. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> very good. I love it. It was very fluent. And you mentioned the important part, the relevant part of the activity with M. Um, inventory management, right? And then you also had the opportunity to invest. <laughs> Mauricio, very good job. Thank okay. you, Mauricio, Jose. Now we're gonna listen to the conversation from Juan Carlos and Sara. Hey, um, hey. Hello, Carla, how are you? Fine, you? Um, I go to, um, do you have uh, a few minutes? I need to talk to you about the uh, an issue, and I, 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 uh, uh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, como se preocupa, se me dio esa palabra. I worry. I worry. I worry. I worry. I, 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 uh, a little uh, worry. Uh, sure. What happened? Uh, okay, um, I have seen the, the reports uh, in the the last reports I can see uh, we have a uh, excess in merchandising and, and pay for storage. Uh, do you know anything about it? Uh, I think we have a uh, excess to inventory. Oh yes, I was reviewing. I consider it's the achievement. Uh, I am considering changing the ship, shipping company to a more efficient, and I think that will solve the problem. Uh, okay, okay. Um, looks perfect for me. Uh, you know uh, that I trust you, okay? And I know your recommendation will give results. Uh, you you know how important it is uh, uh, and relevant have a optimization inventory, okay? The process is very important for the company. Of course, I will be contacting new shipping companies and look forward to working with the next week. Ah, okay, the, the, list, the, the next week, okay, perfect. Perfect for me, okay? And okay. see you, see you soon. See you. Thanks for your cooperation, okay? Very good, Juan Carlos. Carla, that was a very fluent conversation and with the proposals from Carla, right? Very good job. I love that you okay. incorporated um, expressions like I look forward to working with, right? That type of expression make you sound more natural. So very good job. <laughs> okay. okay because of time, we're going to stop here, but I am going to take attendance. Please be ready when you listen to your name. Okay. We're gonna go Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez, Dairo Jonathan Fuentes, Eduardo Antonio Magaña, Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, miss. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza, 
Jonathan José González. Jorge Antonio Sánchez. José Bernardo López. Present. Thank you. José Carlos Argueta. Present. Thank you. José César Lemos. Juan Carlos Herrera. Thank you. Juan José Herrera. Present. Thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you. Kenia Elizabeth Rodriguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mauricio Antonio Velasquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Present. And, thank you. Sandra Abigail Bonilla. And Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present teacher. All right. So, recordatorio antes de irnos, la plataforma traten de avanzar los que tienen nota, alguna nota baja, la tarea 1, 2, 3 o 4. Tómenla de nuevo, retomen esa tarea el fin de semana para que les quede la nota. Si no lleguen al 100, por lo menos al 90, 95, ¿ok? No se queden con porcentajes de 40 o de 70 en la plataforma. Eh, número 2. Lunes, martes y miércoles son las, ultima, las últimas tres clases del módulo. Así que el examen final, el final exam, si no lo han tomado, pueden hacerlo durante el fin de semana o lo vamos a hacer juntos. Lo podemos hacer también el día lunes o martes. Y el miércoles ya solo repasamos todos los temas, ¿ok? En conversación. Just for you to remember that. ¿Ok? I hope you have a great weekend. Go out, relax, spend time with your families and friends. And I will see you on Monday, guys. Have a good weekend. Take care. See you, man. Thank you, teacher. Bye. 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 Thanks, teacher. My pleasure. Have a good night.